The new inflation data just came out this morning and markets are loving it because the inflation data came out cooler than expected and investors and traders are hoping that this means that the Federal Reserve Bank's fight on inflation will be over and that's why the markets are rallying. Now, before we jump the gun, let's talk about what's happening and then we'll go over what this means for you and the things that you need to be aware of. First, the inflation data, the CPI headline inflation number was expected to be 7.9% over the last year. So October 21 to October 2022 was expected to be 7.9%. It came in actually as 7.7%, better than expected. The core inflation number, which is now you take the headline inflation number and you remove what's called the volatile numbers. So you take out energy, you take out food, and this was expected to be 6.5%. It came in at 6.3% annually better than expected. The Federal Reserve Bank loves looking at the core inflation number more than they like looking at the headline number because they don't like to factor in those quote unquote volatile numbers, even though everybody still has to pay the price for food and gas, but that's a topic for a different video. So inflation came in better than expected and the items that went down in price were used cars, trucks, medical care, apparel, and airline fares. The things that went up in price more than expected were housing, gas, and food. And this is where they brought in, uh, in this article, the bank rate chief financial analyst, his name is Greg McBride, and he gave a very interesting statement, which I kind of like. What he said was, if this inflation number constitutes improvement, we've set a very low bar because the reality is still 7.9% inflation is extremely high inflation. Earlier this year, if we got a 7.9% inflation report, this would have been the highest inflation in four decades, 40 years. But now because we've hit 9% inflation coming down to 7.9% feels better, but it is still extremely high and it is still extremely bad. And this is where he's talking about that the issues of high prices and growing prices is still a problem. And the reason why he's saying that is because if you look at the price of things that have been falling versus the price of things that are rising, the price of things that are falling, used car prices, medical care prices, apparel prices, airline prices, all of these things declined. But most of these things, if you take out the medical care, most of these things are discretionary items. You don't have to go out and get a new car. You don't have to go out and buy an airline ticket. You don't have to go on a vacation. You don't have to go out and buy new clothes. But the prices of things that people need, your home, your food, your gas, these prices are still growing very quickly. And that's the issue that he's talking about that, yeah, people are cutting back on things that they don't need, like flights, maybe not buying a car right now and not buying clothes. And because of that, these prices of things are falling, but it's not giving you the full picture because the prices of things that people need are still rising and it's still causing a lot of distress for people because now you're having to still spend more and more money on your housing, your food, and your energy. So very interesting statement. And this brings me to the topic of now, what is the Federal Reserve Bank going to do next? Because you have some people saying that, oh, the Fed is going to stop raising interest rates, but... That's probably not the case. Now, before I go into that, if you do want to stay up to date on what is happening in the financial markets from inflation to the economy, to the stock market, to real estate, to crypto, to the global economy, you can check out Market Briefs. It is a completely free newsletter where my team is breaking down what's happening in the markets. That way you can make better decisions with your money. That way you can be more aware of what's happening in the markets. You can read it in less than five minutes every morning. And even if you're not a financial person, not only are you going to understand what's happening in the markets, I promise you're going to love reading market briefs every morning. And if you're saying, but just breathe, what if you're wrong? What if I don't love it? Well, you can unsubscribe. It's not going to cost you a penny. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I'll put the link to how you can join down in the description below. Now, on the topic of the Federal Reserve Bank. So the Federal Reserve Bank has said up until now that their goal is 2% inflation. And they do not want to stop tightening, aka raising interest rates until we hit 2% inflation. I was actually just listening to an economist saying, Markets are loving this. Let them have their day. Let them have their week where they're happy and feel like this is over. The raising interest rate problem is over. However, don't expect the Fed 
to not raise interest rates, aka you can expect the Federal Reserve Bank to continue raising interest rates. Maybe they don't do it as aggressively, but they're going to continue to raise interest rates because inflation is still nowhere near where they want it to be. 7.9% inflation is still many multiples away from the 2% inflation goal that they have. And that's where she's saying that you can expect inflation to continue rising. And on top of that, the second thing that I want you to understand is more on an economic level, which is what I like to call the absorption rate of higher interest rates. Like the housing market is one of the most sensitive asset classes to interest rates because when interest rates go up, immediately buying a home becomes more expensive. And so it's very sensitive in that sense. And interest rates have gone up a lot this year alone. And so the housing market hasn't really absorbed 7% mortgage rates yet. And interest rates are gonna most likely continue to keep going up, which means as we're trying to absorb 4% and 5% mortgage rates, interest rates have jumped up past 6%, past 7%, and will likely continue going up as the Federal Reserve Bank continues to raise interest rates. So what does that mean? Well, there's a cost to higher interest rates, which is gonna take time. Sellers don't wanna sell their homes at a discounted price. Buyers are saying, well, we'll keep waiting. So you're kind of seeing this tug of war where who's gonna break first? Because buyers are saying, I can't afford this home at this interest rate. And sellers are saying, well, I'm gonna just keep waiting because I don't wanna sell my home at a discounted price. And until there's a need, where there's a need for a seller to sell or a need for a buyer to buy, well, then something's gonna have to break. And the reality, and this is gonna sound weird, but the reality is in this market, people still have a lot of money. Corporations still have a lot of money. And it's one of those things where when people still have all this money, that they can continue spending money for things that are more expensive. There was a study that came out which said that Americans today, even in this high inflationary time, still have over a trillion dollars of excess cash saved up from now versus pre-pandemic. And so there's still excess cash, a lot of excess savings. And people, you know, you hear people talk about, oh, I can't wait till the crash because then I'm going to come in and buy. Well, you have a lot of people thinking that way. And the unfortunate reality that you have to understand is when everybody's saying, I can't wait for the crash so I can come in and buy. Well, it's not going to happen like that because the reality is when that crash were to happen, most people are not going to have the money to buy. And everybody wants to see the crash, but no one wants to go through the pain. And the reality is in order to see asset prices fall like that, you have to see more economic pain. And the economic pain gets triggered when people run out of money. And right now people still have a lot of money. And this is where the Federal Reserve Bank is going to continue raising interest rates while we have to go through this absorption period of letting these higher interest rates kind of trickle throughout our economy, because what's going to happen? Well, if you're a business, your cost of servicing your debt is going up because the reality is most businesses don't have a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. They have variable interest rate debt or they have short term debts that readjust every year, every two years, every three years. So as now businesses over the last year and a half have racked up the largest amount of corporate debt ever. Well, now as interest rates rise, their debt payments are going to readjust. They're gonna have bigger expenses. As their expenses get higher, they're gonna to have to continue to pay these higher expenses while trying to grow the business at a time when the economy is slowing. So you have all these different factors together. And this is where you don't wanna perfectly try to time the market, but the best thing that you can do is understand what's happening. And again, have a strategy, okay? Always do your own due diligence. Never blindly listen to a random guy on YouTube. Always do your own research. But for the average person, the average investor, the best thing to do is just dollar cost average. Every week, put your money into the market. Find some good ETFs that give you exposure to the market. Maybe the S&P 500, maybe some emerging markets, maybe some dividend stocks, maybe some innovation. You got to figure out what it is that you're interested in. Come up with your own portfolio. And every week, you invest your money. Is investing risky? You bet. Are you guaranteed to make money? Absolutely not. But that's the way investing works. So you invest your money consistently. That way you can get this type of dollar cost averaging. Now for some people, very some people, very few people, 
the better option is going to be for you to know actually be more of an active investor looking for investments. Maybe it's real estate. Maybe it's individual companies. Maybe it's actually taking over businesses and then finding a business undervalued and coming in and buying. But you have to be willing to put in the education and research because if you're just blindly throwing your money around, you are gambling. And this is where you need to be financially educated and prepared. That way you can take advantage of the opportunities that will come away. Because the reality is over the next 12 to 18 months, we're going to see a lot of craziness happen in the economy and the markets. And you want to be not just prepared to take care of yourself and survive, but also to be able to thrive.